Welcome back to Game Dev with AI. I'm Mike, and today we continue developing our first real time strategy game without any coding whatsoever, just using the tools that I could find, mostly AI tools. If you remember in my previous video, I was about to get started developing shooting, but I noticed before we get into shooting, we need to improve several things that we didn't finish. So let's devote this video improving things like selecting units, creating selecting box, creating very primitive AI for the enemies, and also solving the previous issues. For example, our tank in the past was traveling through the water and then it, its speed wasn't changing. So that's the first issue we, we are gonna quickly solve using the, ch the chat GPT. If you remember, I asked this question to chat GPT on how to get the tank speed back to its normal speed after it's out of the water. And it gave me the solution over here. To test its solution, I decided to create a new debug message called tank in water. This message will be displayed only when our tank is inside the water. So we know if it's out of the water, it shouldn't be displayed. To create the debug message, we go to our object type, we right click and we create new object type called text. Once we create it, we put it where you need it to be. Then we set its value. You can also set its color and the size. Now let's go to our code. We create new variable, global variable called tank speed. It's a normal tank speed, 200, and normal soldier speed, 100. As you can see in the past, our overlapping with water code didn't work, so I turned it off and wrote the new code for you here. So this will be a system event which will execute every tick and we will be checking if our tank is overlapping with water. Then we'll set it best finding speed to 50, which means super slow. And we set our debug text to visible. So we'll know that our tank is in the water. Finally, to make sure tank is moving with normal speed if it's not in the water, we edit additional event here, additional action here called pathfinding, set speed to tank speed. Now let's test it. So now if I take my tank and go to the water, all right, it goes with normal speed. And now it goes super slow and it says tank in water. So this is our debug message. Okay, now it's out of the water and it's moving very fast. As you can see, the speed is fine. And we forgot to remove the debug message, but it doesn't matter anymore. So the issue is solved. Another issue we have is that our code is getting pretty long, especially I had to copy my movements and selection features from the tank to my soldier. To organize it, I created comments and I moved my events into certain groups. You can see these events will execute on start of the game. Then we have tank selection and movements of the tank, all these commands. Then our soldier selection and movements, similar. Then we have group selection and um, mouse box selector, which I'll explain in this video. Then we have checking the color of the flag if we capture the tower. This will be developing in the next videos. Right now it's just changing colors. It doesn't do anything yet. And here I developed primitive AI for enemy soldiers. I will explain it as well in this video. And here Additionally, our fort is producing tanks every 15 seconds. 
So I organized our code into parts and this way it's much easier for me to find if I need to change something I know exactly where it is. I highly suggest to keep everything organized. Additionally in the menu in settings I highly suggest that you enable backups because you don't want to lose your work so make sure you have safe and backups enabled. Now we are going to add the selection box which was developed together with ChatGPT and here is how it works. So you click the left mouse, you drag the selection box and everything that's overlapping under will be selected. So now all these units are tinted green, means they're all selected. So now if I right click, they will all start moving together. And when they arrive, they spread out. So that's our selecting box. It works really well. Let me show quickly how I did it. First, instead of mid journey, I went to Google Images and find the free image from the from the stock on the neon background square. So something like this will work. Make sure it's free, no copyright issues. Then save it. Then in Photoshop, we make sure it's correct size, 512 by 512. And I also removed the corners so it's softer. And this will be saved in PNG as a box selector image. Now in our construct tree, we create a new sprite called selection box. And we load our image here. It's 512 by 512 and here is very important. Each sprite has a center point. You can edit image center point using this a little button and we can right click here and quick assign on the bottom right. So our selector center point will be not in the middle but right here because we drag and drop it from the corner. Remember, not from the middle. That's very important. Make sure you don't forget this. First, I forgot this and I had a lot of trouble because my image on the selector box wasn't spreading correctly. Next, as always, we went to ChatGPT and we asked how to make a selection box for group units in Construct Tree. It gave me step-by-step -step tutorials. So I was studying this. And show, let me show you how I implemented it. It will be all over here. Ah, first on top we, we created two global variables called mouse start y, mouse start x, which are zeros. And also selecting is a boolean which is false by default. Now if we go and on the mouse left click when it's clicked we set our mouse start x and mouse start y to the current positions of the mouse and we set the position of our select selection box to mouse x and mouse y ah and very important thing i forgot to mention is that the size height and width of our selection box is zero when we put it on our layer it will it's here with the size of zero zero we just put it somewhere out of the map and all our debug messages as well stay out of the map next when left mouse button is down which means we are still holding the the mouse so our mouse is pressed and then we want to move it we set selecting mode, this is a boolean to true. And we set the widths and the heights of mouse start x mi minus mouse x because we are moving the mouse. So widths and height will be changing in real time. And once we release the button, we again put our selection box basically to invisible. We put it size 0, 0 and we move it away from the map. And we put our selecting mode to false. 
Finally, we need to add the logic that when our selecting box is overlapping with our units. So every tick we are checking if our selecting box is overlapping with our units. We do it first for the tank and then for the robot. And if it's so, then we set the variable selected to true. This way, when they are overlapping, it will be selected properly. Now you can test everything. You see it's appearing correctly. And if I right click, they're moving. So everything is working really well right now. Now, before we proceed, I wanted to share a couple of very important things that I learned today. By the way, I recommend that you spend at least 15 minutes every day learning more about Construct, about different tutorials. This way you will see the tools that this engine has, because if you don't know the tools, then you'll really struggle to apply them as well. That, that's why you don't need to learn coding, but you need to learn at least about the tools and what they do. Anyways, today I learned about Midjourney Seeds. This is very important. Let me explain you how it works and you can read more in Midjourney documents. The main problem is when you create Midjourney character. If you try to run it again, let's say I want this but look damaged. And you see the problem, it completely redraws this. It doesn't use the same character anymore. And I was looking a lot, how can I keep the character the same instead of completely redrawing it from scratch? And that can be done with seeds. So for our image, we can go to the online profile of Midjourney library. Uh, as you can see here in our Midjourney library, we can go to the seed that we like, let's say this one, and then we can copy seed. You can see, we can also copy job ID, we can copy prompt, but for us it's very important to copy the seed. The seed means unique ID of this kind of generation. So if we want to use this robot once again later, we'll use the same seed. So this way we can use our image of the robot that we liked. They give the same prompt, but we change it a little bit. And in the end we add seed and then we add seed ID. This way you can see it keeps using the same robot, just changing it. what I'm asking to change instead of completely redrawing the character. So this helps you keep the character consistent. This is very important if you're going to animate the character or if you're going to do cutscenes, you really need to keep the same character. And the next thing I was learning today is how we can animate the character using uh, tools that I could find. So this is not a 3D model. That's a big problem. This is just a 2D image generated by Midjourney and it looks like a 3D model, but it doesn't have any rig. It, we cannot turn it around. We cannot move its legs, so animating it, it's quite difficult. And I was looking, how can we do it quickly? There are many different ways, and we'll devote the whole video about this, but I found a quick one. It's called Sketch Meta Demo Lab.com, and we can upload here an image of our robot, our guy. And then we click next, it will scan it. And then you can create a rig, you can fix the mask of the robot. And then it will rig it, you can fix the rig. And then it will help you make some animations with it. There is a lot of trial and error here because instead of flag we have a gun here, uh, which looks quite funny. But after some trial and error, I was able to get the following animation. 
this is how it looks it's working really funny <laughs> and balancing it's gone this is look it looks really good and really funny so i can stop frame and then just do several screenshots of these positions and then what i just did i removed again background and i made three frames here of this guy walking these are just images with removed background And now, and now we now we go to our construct. We find our troops friendly, and I create additional animation called walking. I call it walking. You can preview it here. You see, it's just three frames. Very very primitive. But remember, guys, this is we're not going to do next generation super budget game. This, this unit will be super small on the screen, so we don't need to make everything perfect. This will look really good. And I added additional action here when troop friendly is moving along the path. We set animation to walking. And when it's not moving, we set animation to idle. So when pathfinding arrived, we set animation to idle. So we have two animations. Now we can test it. As you can see, I select my little robot and it starts walking. It starts walking and it's moving. It's gone. It's quite funny. Finally, what we did today, we also created primitive AI for our enemy soldiers. Instead of them randomly wandering around, what we did in previous video, I created a few more rules. So first of all, I randomized the wandering. It's now random. Instead of every second, it's random seconds from 0 to 4. It will just wander around. We already did it before. Now, what else I did? I wanted them to capture the flags, so every random from 10 to 20 seconds, if our, this is a variable, if flag captured is true, if we already captured the flag, then enemy will go to the flag and capture it back. So basically, from time to time, enemies will try to capture the flag again. And additionally, every from 20 to 60 seconds, enemies will try to go to our fort. In future, they will try to destroy it, basically, to win the game. But for now, they will just walk there. So now pay attention to the enemies. You see, first of all, they start wandering around. But if I capture the flags, let me just capture all the flags quickly. Now, let's see what will happen. I capture the flags. And now all, cap all flags are captured and you will see AI will try to recapture some of the flags on the conditions that I took. I don't remember how often it executes. Probably we need to do it more often, but this one is already recaptured, right? Let's try to capture a few more flags. As you can see our robot are crossing the water. Oh, look at this. See, they started to recapture the flags. So they wander around and they trying to recapture some of the flags. Obviously we'll be improving this much more. Now this is very primitive, but that's a start, right? That's all for today, guys. That's the state of our game at this point. In the next video, we'll work a little bit more on the logic of the capturing towers and counting how many towers we have. We'll need it later to count the production of our units. Remember, the more flags you capture, the faster the production will be. And of course, we can start working on the shooting, creating bullets, creating explosions, 
creating particles. So a lot of exciting things are coming and I cannot wait to continue our development. There is last thing that I wanted to mention before I go. Usually, like I said, I use AI and ChatGPT to explain me everything what I need to do. But there is one small problem with this method. It's, it can only tell you what to do. It cannot look at your code. Because our code is in visual scripting like this, I just cannot copy paste it into ChatGPT and ask him directly what's, what's an issue is. Like if there is a logical issue, it cannot look at my code and tell me what's wrong. Maybe in future we'll be able to upload images to ChatGPT or something. But at least for time of the recording, there is no way for me to tell ChatGPT what, what I already did and what the mistake can be. So for very difficult issues that I cannot solve myself and ChatGPT cannot help me as well, I will be asking uh, professional programmers on Fiverr to consult me and the experts can quickly look in my code and just tell me, okay, this line is wrong and this line is wrong. If you go on fiverr.com, there are a lot of experts in Construct3. Obviously, they offer you game development services. I'm not going to be using their services, but I will be showing them my code and simply asking them about the issue I couldn't solve myself and with ChatGPT. And for $5, they can quickly tell you, okay, change this line, change that line. And this really helps when you're developing without any programming skills. This is the way to go as well. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments below what we should pay attention to and how we should proceed with this. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.